Hello, Mr. Lawrence's math students. Here's yet another video all about equation solving. This one will use fractions and decimals. Again, it's good for all levels of Mr. Lawrence's math classes. Eighth grade math, algebra level two, door to me, and of course, honors algebra. All right, so first of all, we have solving equations with decimals and fractions. Now, a lot of you want to add four to problem number one. You can't do that because that four is being divided by the three. The two X is also being divided by three. We have to get rid of this three before we're able to do anything. Well, the three is attached to the two X minus four by division, right? See the fraction bar? So I'm gonna multiply by three over one. Of course, I must multiply by three on the other side. When I do that, the denominator and this three will cancel out, leaving a two X minus four to equal 18. All right, so now it's just a two step equation and I'm going to add four to both sides. I have a little pen trouble here, sorry. Okay, and I'm gonna get two X equals 22. I'll divide each side by two. And when I do so, I'm going to get x equals 11. All right, I'll let you go ahead and check that yourself. Number two is almost just as easy. Now, we have some denominators. We have more than one. And, you know, some of you might be thinking, oh, I'm going to multiply by four. But the problem is, if I multiply this by four over one, it doesn't cancel out the three. So then you go, oh, well, then I'll multiply by 3 over 1. But then you have the same problem over here with the 4. The 3 won't cancel a 4. Like if I go like this, they're not going to cancel. It'll cancel here. I need a number that will allow me to cancel both denominators. I need the least common multiple of 4 and 3. Now, if you don't know how to find that, you can count by the largest number, largest denominator, which is 4, and then 8, and then 12. And you stop when you get a number that both the four goes into, obviously you're counting by four, four goes into all of the ones I said, but three goes into 12 as well. So that's the least common multiple. That's what I'm gonna multiply by. I'm gonna do 12 over one. Here I'm also gonna do 12 over one. And here I'm just gonna do a plain old 12. Now many of you, would rather get a common denominator and add it. You're allowed to do that. I personally think it's more difficult. Some of you go, well, I think what you're doing here is more difficult. Yeah, but the skill I'm doing only seems difficult because it's new to you. And once you get good at it, it's not difficult at all. And it has more applications than just getting a common denominator. So I'm going to divide 4 by 4 and 12 by 4. And so I'll have 3 times x, which of course is 3x. Over here, I'm going to send 3 and 12 four times. 4 times 2 is 8. Yeah, there we go. And 1 times 12 is 12. All right. Now it's just a two-step equation. I'll add 8 to both sides. And I will get 3x equals 20. Divide both sides by 3 to get x alone. And I will get x equals, you could say 20 thirds if you like. Some of you would rather say x equals 6 and 2 thirds, and that's fine. If you really have to long divide, you're allowed to. I wouldn't recommend it. I think it's unnecessary work. It would be 6 and 6 tenths repeating. Okay, any one of those is fine. Okay, now on numbers 3 and 4, it's different. They're decimals only it's the same exact thing. Look, this fraction isn't 0.5, it's 5 tenths. Did you hear it? 5 tenths, right? And this one's 4 tenths. And this one's 6 tenths. What number could I multiply by that would get rid of all my denominators? You got it, I'm gonna multiply them all by 10. Oh no, something finished itself then. Got in my way. Be gone with you. All right, so now I'm gonna multiply this one. Oop, I'm not in writing mode. There we go, by 10. And of course this one by 10. 
And when I multiply by 10, the decimal point just moves one place to the right. So this 5 tenths becomes 5x. Okay, and interestingly, if I do 10 over 1 up here, tens cancel, leaving 5 over 1, or just plain old 5. Of course, this becomes 4, and this becomes 6. And now I have a pretty simple two-step equation. I'll add 4 to both sides, and I'll get 5x equals 10. Dividing by 5 will tell me that x equals 2. And there you go. Okay. On number 4, well, I've got 25 hundredths. Right? I've got 1 tenth, and I've got 85 one hundredths. What's the least common multiple of 110? Well, it's 100. Yeah, so I'm going to have to multiply all three by 100. Okay, and of course the decimal point will move, but it won't move one place to the right. It'll move two when I'm multiplying by 100. So this will become 25x. This will become 10, and this will become 85. I'll subtract 10 from both sides, and I will get 25x equals 75. And, of course, I'll divide by 25, and then x will equal 3. And, again, you can check that. I'm pretty sure it's correct. All right. Here's some for you to try. There's three problems there. Pause the video. When you're ready, you can come and see my solutions. All right, make sure you've tried the problems. Here comes my solution. All right, I'm going to get x equals, let me see, that's going to be 46. It's going to be 23 halves, which, of course, is 11 and a half. Okay, or if you really have to use decimal, it's not wrong, but don't run away from fractions just because. On this one, I don't know if I can do it in my head as well, but I know I need the least common multiple of 2, 4, and 8. My least common multiple is 8, so I'm going to multiply by 8 over 1, by 8 over 1, by 8 over 1, and I will get 4x minus 2, and that's going to equal 1. And if I solve that all the way, I'll get x equals 3 fourths. Okay, of course, if you have 75 hundredths, that would be correct. All right. This last one here, if I multiply by 100, I'm going to get 44x minus 20 is going to equal 40. I'm going to get 44x. That's going to equal 60. x is going to equal 60 44ths. I need to simplify that. I'm going to divide them both by 4, which would be 15 elevenths. So you could give me x equals 15 elevenths, or you could give me 1 and 4 elevenths. I would not recommend a decimal on this one, but if you really had to, you would have 1 in 36 hundredths repeating. Okay, that's it. That's probably the last video on equation solving I'm going to do, unless somebody specifically asks for a different one. I sure hope uh, they helped you learn a little bit. If you want more practice, please come see me, because remember, you got to get good at this, you just have to keep practicing, practicing, practicing until you're good. All right, Mr. Lawrence, signing off. Have a good night, everybody.